بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله continuing on in our study of the difference between advising and condemning and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al-nafir as kantaybu amin al-muttaqabil and bless us to be of those who practice what we preach amin ya rabbil alameen we reach a portion of the treaties where Imam ibn Rajab was discussing the recompense meaning the response or the reward if you will or punishment for the one who spreads evil meaning spreads evil about the people uh, unjustly. So even if we're speaking about someone from Ahl al we have to be just. It doesn't matter. We have to be just because Islam calls us to justice. Islam is everything just. Ahl sunnah is the best in manners, is the best in, in uh, the most just with the creation. And we should set that example even when we refute a makhalif, even when we refute those people who have fallen into the error and so forth. Imam Ibn Rajib Rahimullah Ta'ala said, the recompense of one who spreads the evil deeds of his believing brother and seeks after his faults and exposes his defects is that Allah will seek after his faults and disgrace him billah, by exposing them, even if he may have committed them in the privacy of his own home. This is based on what has been reported from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in several places and Imam Ahmed Abu Dawood and At-Tirmidhi have transmitted it from numerous paths of narration. At-Tirmidhi transmitted from the hadith of uh, Wa'ila ibn Al-Asqa on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said, Do not express joy at your brother's misfortune or else Allah will pardon him for it and test you with it. And he, Tirmidhi, said that it was Hassan Gharib hadith. He also reports the hadith of Mu'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu in marfu' form whosoever condemns his brother because of a sin he committed will not die until he commits it himself and his chain of narration is munqata is, is broken. Al-Hasan said it used to be said whoever condemns his brother for a sin that he repented from will not die until Allah tests him with it uh, meaning the same sin. It is reported from the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu with a chain of narration that has weakness in it Affliction is charged by speech, so if a man condemns another man by saying that he breastfed from a female dog, then that man who said that will indeed breastfeed from one. Anyhow, these are hadith which are not uh, sahih, and, but they give us a meaning which is uh, an important, correct meaning which the shar illustrates from us, and that it shows us that there is a punishment and that we should be just because you don't know, uh, we do know that from a sound narration that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish the one uh, if you expose the, the, the Muslim uh, should conceal the sins of his brother or sister and that the one who exposes the sins of his brother or sister will have his sins exposed. So if we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cover our faults, and we should cover the faults of our brothers and sisters. And this is in reference to what? This is in reference to those people whose sins are concealed, which you may have come upon. So it doesn't. It's not beneficial for you to mention someone's name and say, "Sheikh, we have a dai, and his name is so and so, and such and such and such and such," get, trying to get a fatwa of of a sin that you came upon that was secret. The point being not to try to strive to destroy the honor of your brothers and sisters in Islam, even from Ahl al-Bidha, but rather from the Bab al nasiha in advising that you should, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they are making outward sin and outward bid'ah, that they should be refuted and those sins should be refuted and the person, if they're from Ahl Sunnah, their honor maintained. If they're from Ahl Bid'ah, then we're not concerned about their honor, but at the same time, we cannot lie and we must be just. Then the Imam mentioned the meaning of this has been reported on a group amongst the Salaf, and when Ibn Sarin, uh, Sarin failed to return a debt he owed and was detained because of it, he said, Indeed, I am unaware of the sin I committed by which this befell me. I condemned a man 40 years ago, saying to him, O bankrupt one. So Ibn Sarin, he said, Indeed, I am aware of the sin I committed 
by which this befell me, meaning that he recalled the fact that 40 years ago had passed when he said to a man, O oh, Muflis, O oh, bankrupt one, and then this, uh, then he became bankrupt 40 years later. And this shows us the taqwa of the Salaf, because we don't know if it was because of that reason or not, but this is, shows us the wara and the taqwa of the Salaf of this Ummah that they were cautious about. They didn't speak reckless. And this is a, a big difference between us and them. We claim the path in the minhaj of the Salaf. And we strive to follow. But we don't have the same taqwa when applying these principles. We're not fearful of Allah when we speak about individuals. We just speak, yell, scream, curse, lie, do whatever it takes, go through their tapes, go through this, and strive to find their faults. Whereas the Salaf, if they came upon their faults, they dealt with it based on Kitabullah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahu musta'an. Then Ibn Rajah Ibn Rahim, Rahim Allah Ta'ala mentioned, he said, concerning condemning. So this is, has to do with the rulings and the ahkam of uh, condemning someone. Meaning, uh, when this is madhmum, when this is sinful. He said, from the apparent signs of condemning is exposing someone's evil and propagating it under the pretense of advising. While claiming that it is only these defects that are making him do it, general or specific. Meanwhile, on the inside, his aim is only to condemn and cause harm. So he is from the brothers of the hypocrites, those whom Allah has disparaged in his book in many places. For indeed, Allah disparages those who outwardly display a good action or saying, while indeed intending inwardly to accomplish a mischievous and evil goal. And he has counted that as one of, uh, of the aspects of hypocrisy, as is stated in Surah Al-Barah, in which he humiliates the hypocrites and exposes their despicable attributes when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and as for those who set up a masjid in order to cause harm, meaning spread disbelief, disunite the disbelievers, uh, the, the believers, and to make it uh, as an outpost for those who made war against Allah and his messenger since aforetime, they will indeed swear that their intention is nothing but good, but Allah bears witness that they are certainly liars. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, think not that those who rejoice in what they have done and love to be praised for what they have done, do not think that they are rescued from the torment, and for them is a painful uh, punishment. So there's a painful torment. You know, it's not just a, uh, an affair in this life, but when you expose people's sins and you have a wicked thust, a wicked intention, and you're speaking about people, declaring that they're innovators and this and that and the other, without the correct intention, and without even a dilla, and exposing their faults, meaning these are things that were secret, uh, that they may have done and you sought to find fault with them, then your punishment and your recompense is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Imam then said, this ayat was sent down concerning the Jews when the Prophet sallallahu asked about something and they concealed knowledge of it, informing him instead of something else. Yet they showed to him that they had indeed informed him of all what he had asked them and they sought praise from him sallallahu alayhi wasallam because of it and became joyous at what they gained by concealing it and because he sallallahu alayhi wasallam asked them is this what ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu stated and his hadith concerning that is transmitted in the two sahihain uh, abu sa'id al-khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said there was a group of men amongst the hypocrites who when the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam would go out to fight in the military expeditions would refrain from going with him and they would be happy with opposing the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with their sitting instead of fighting. So when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, would arrive, they would make excuses for themselves and swear to him. And they love to be praised for what they, for that which they did not do. So this ayat was revealed. So this was re revealed regarding these hypocrites and their hypocritical uh, behavior. Therefore, these characteristics are the characteristics of the Jews and the hypocrites. And it is that someone outwardly displays a saying or action while presenting an image which he appears to be upon good. Yet his intention in doing that is to accomplish an evil goal. So he is praised for what good he has made manifest outwardly while accomplishing it, accomplishing by it. The evil goal he has kept hidden inwardly. So he accomplishes his evil goal that was within his heart. And although he outwardly manifested something good. 
and he basks in the praise he receives for that which he has outwardly portrayed as being good, which is in fact evil on the inside, and he is happy that his evil hidden objective has been achieved. So his benefit is perfected for him, and his scheme is carried out effectively by this deception. Anyone with this characteristic definitely falls under the threat of this ayat. And <clears throat> then uh, Ibn Rajab, he mentioned some examples with people of these characteristics uh, that fell into, that, that were scholarly. He says, uh, when someone desires to defame a man, belittle him and expose his faults so the people turn away from him, this is done either because he loves to cause harm to him because of his enmity towards him or because he fears him due to his rivalry that exists between them with regard to wealth, leadership, or blameworthy causes. So he does not find a way towards accomplishing his goal except by publicly degrading him due to some religious reason. For example, someone, meaning a scholar, has refuted a weak opinion from the many opinions of a well-known and famous scholar. So this evil individual spreads that amongst those who respect that scholar saying this person that did this refutation hates this scholar and is only defaming and criticizing him so by doing this he the evil person deceives all those people that hold that scholar in esteem making them believe that such a refutation was done out of hatred and with insult on part of the one refuting and that his deed was full of audacity audacity and arrogance so he the evil person is outwardly defending the scholar and uplifting the abuse from him and this is an act pleasing to Allah and is in, in obedience to him so he combines this outer facade of advising with two disgusting and forbidding forbidden things so this is very important again it goes back to the intention to uh, not be hypocritical and sometimes we find that some individuals they follow the faults of others in order to belittle that person or in order to make themselves seem better and praiseworthy. And so this is what we have to be cautious of falling into these wicked characteristics. Uh, we'll stop there, inshallah ta'ala, until the next sitting.